in the U.S., and he's going to be talking about creating and maintaining Tadwig vocabularies using spreadsheets. Take it away, Steve. If you're like me, you were surprised when you read Harry Potter and discovered that the food did not magically appear in the tables in the Hogwarts, but rather was made by house elves in the basement. My name is Steve Baskoff, and I'm going to talk about how we create and maintain Tadwig vocabularies using spreadsheet. It doesn't happen by magic. I'm going to talk about the standards documentation specification and its scope, about the Tadwig metadata model, and about the rs.tadwig.org GitHub repository. Then I'll show you how you can create a new vocabulary using a spreadsheet and about how vocabulary maintainers can change them using spreadsheets as well. And finally, I'll delve into some of the technical details about how those spreadsheets are ingested and the derived files are generated. The Tadwig standards documentation specification is a standard which says how human readable text documents should be formatted. It also describes how text documents that describe vocabularies should be formatted and how machine readable descriptions of text documents and vocabulary metadata should be structured. It describes vocabularies at the bag of terms level, which includes labels, definitions, but does not specify more complex things like how XML schemas should be formed or about ontologies or application profiles. One of the critical features of the SDS is that every representation of the metadata should be substantively the same. In other words, if you go to a human readable document and see what the definition of a term is, you should get the same definition as you would get if you acquired the machine readable metadata. That brings one of the first important issues. How do we make sure that all representations of metadata are the same? Another feature that the specification describes is a version model where current terms move through time, but they can change. And as they change, different versions of those terms are issued. We want to be able to track all the previous versions so we can see what the state was of a particular term in the past. So how do we generate the version metadata and associate it with current term metadata? Then there is also a hierarchy model which describes the way that vocabularies are constructed in Tadwig. Vocabularies have terms which are grouped together in term lists. Those are basically terms that share a similar namespace. And then those term lists are grouped together within a vocabulary. You can have one or more vocabularies within a particular standard. If you generate a new version at some lower level in the hierarchy, that will automatically spawn new versions of the higher levels as well. So how do we proliferate the new versions at the higher levels in the hierarchy automatically? Well, the place where the magic lives is the rs.tadwig.org GitHub repository. Each directory in the repository has a Darwin core archive-like structure of CSV files. This is a sort of apocalypse proof format for storing data. We have actually had cases in the past where Tadric standards have been lost. And the idea here is that we have very simple and easily understandable forms of the data in a very secure place, GitHub. One of the things that you may be getting from this description of these issues is that it's way too complicated to think about doing these sorts of changes by hand. Let's take a look at how you can create a vocabulary using a spreadsheet. This method is predicated on the idea that vocabulary developers should not have to understand all the gory technical details about how the creation of terms is processed. They should simply be able to fill out a spreadsheet that has easily understandable headers. There is a set of directions for how to do this at this URL. And there are also examples of three types of vocabularies that can be developed with the spreadsheets. The establishment means vocabulary, which was a recently adopted addition to Darwin Core, was developed using the system. It used a simple controlled vocabulary type of spreadsheet 
So it has a column for the controlled value string. Once the spreadsheet is created and run through the script, the information that's in the spreadsheet gets transformed into human readable documents and machine readable metadata, both following the form of the standards documentation specification. The process of maintaining a vocabulary is similar. It is also spreadsheet based. However, it uses one of the existing course spreadsheets in the rs.tadwig.org repository as a starting point. You simply take the table, delete any of the machine generated metadata columns and also any rows that you don't wanna change. Then all you do is edit the rows for terms that need to be changed and add rows for any new terms. So it's actually quite a bit less complicated than creating a new vocabulary. This process was used for the recent term addition of the Darwin Core Pathway term and also degree of establishment term and the revision of the establishment mean terms. So this is an example of a simple vocabulary type spreadsheet. It does not have controlled values or anything like that. The result again is the new term showing up in the list of terms document and also now deliverable as machine readable metadata. It's now time to visit the Hogwarts kitchen and see where all the gory details are of how this actually works. If you're a non-technical person, you can just skip this because you don't really need to know. You can go get a coffee. But if you're interested in knowing how it works or if you'd like to be able to generate your own list of terms documents from a spreadsheet, then you should stay. What I'm gonna talk about here is summarized in these instructions that are in the repository. The sheet that you filled out and hand edited gets processed by a Python script in a Jupyter notebook. That hand edited CSV gets turned into the Darwin Core archive like CSV files that are in the rs.tadwig.org repository. The links between these different spreadsheets, time stamps, version IRIs are all generated by the script. Then there's a mechanism by which commits to the repository cause it to be pushed out to a test server and releases from the repository cause the data to be pushed into a production service. Thanks to Matt Blissett of GBIV who worked out these details. What happens in this case is there are mapping tables that explain how the column headers in the tables in the repository get mapped to properties. And this allows the server to then generate the machine readable representations in Turtle XML. And also some of the HTML representations are generated automatically. The third step is to generate the human readable documents. There is a Python script, again, in the form of a Jupyter notebook. This is kind of a template script that's hackable. It generates a list of terms document. There's also a script that is used by Darwin Core to generate the quick reference guide. This ensures that whatever is in the original table is reproduced in every different form. The markdown template for the human readable documents follows the SDS guidelines. So it automatically turns it into the form that the SDS requires. There's one additional step that we can take, and that is to run a script that will combine the normative definition from the one CSV file with non-normative translations that are found in another CSV file. And these can be used to generate JSON-LD that is a SCOS representation of the data. The reason for separating the translations from the basic metadata is that since the translations are not controlled by the standards process, they can be developed rapidly. So for the new controlled vocabularies that were recently adopted, we are looking for translators so that we can get them translated into as many languages as possible. As soon as we have a translation, we can run it through the script and that immediately becomes available in the JSON-LD. Because the JSON-LD is machine readable, developers can have their applications easily ingested through the internet. Here's an example of a web page that displays the labels and definitions of the controlled vocabulary terms in English. However, I can also display them in Dutch, 
or in Spanish. As soon as a new version of the JSON-LD is pushed to GitHub with any additional translations, they will immediately become available in this web page. We're really excited to have this simple spreadsheet-based approach as a way to make Tadwig standards metadata more widely available to the international community in their own language. Thank you very much. Let's see. The questions I saw um, were tributes to Harry Potter and um, People wanted to know whether, Steve, you would be a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw. But definitely, there definitely there. Ravenclaw, our whole family is. Okay, so we have the answer to one of those questions. Um, John Wazorek uh, asks, could you mention examples for which this has been used already? Um, Paula adds, uh, I think the, with the establishment means example, this question is covered, but do you wanna give- Yeah, it? so there, uh, recently uh, in the, the most, uh, the October 13 release of the GitHub repository that contained uh, two, two, new, two or three new Audubon core terms, the three, the two new Darwin core terms and one revised Darwin core terms and then six controlled vocabularies. So these uh, additions to both Darwin Core and Audubon Core have basically been run through the system. So when you go and look at the list of term pages or the quick reference guide, uh, they uh, show up. And another thing that people may not know is that um, these things, the URIs of all of these things are dereferenceable uh, as machine readable data. So if you request Turtle, um, you can basically get it in machine readable. It, it also is uh, expressed in JSON. There is a small problem. It's valid JSON LD, but um, there's an issue with the structure of how it's set up. So uh, that's a technical detail. But anyway, the idea is that all of this stuff is available in a machine readable form. It's also in a Sparkle endpoint too, so you can dump the whole thing. But th by using this process, whatever the person puts in the spreadsheet, no matter where you get the information from, you always get the same thing. And I should mention, um, so Quentin was on the, the guinea pig for testing the uh, spreadsheet method for his control vocabularies. And, uh, and I think that was a relatively simple one. Uh, William, I've been working with him on Pliny and Core. Theirs is a lot more complicated because it has, uh, terms from a bunch of different namespaces. So they could, they could address uh, issues of how simple or complicated this was to use. Okay, um, Nikki Nicholson asks, are these scripts triggered by GitHub Actions? Uh, they are not, at this point, they're not triggered by GitHub Actions, but um, I mean, at, at present they're in Jupyter Notebooks. That's partly just because I'm not a developer and I want to watch each step of the way and make sure everything's working according to plan. But um, in theory, the, uh, this Python could be moved out of that and be triggered. I mean, some of it is, is automated. So for example, Matt has it set up so that, that when there's a release of the repository, uh, then all the uh, data on the server goes live. So it could be automated more in the future. But one of the problems is that there are some differences in how you have to process. For example, borrowed terms have to be processed slightly differently than Tadwig minted terms. So that complicates the process a little bit in terms of automating it. And uh, I see some, some calls here for, so if, if you wanna translate any of the new invasive species uh, uh, controlled vocabularies into your language, uh, talk to Quentin and on the Audubon core side, the three new controlled vocabularies we have for format and subtype and so on, we are also looking for translators. So far, those are only in English, but we would love to make them available in as many languages as possible, as soon as possible. Um, okay. Um, 
So that seems to answer, I think, Quentin's uh, question, um, whether you want help with the translation or not. Definitely. Um, I mean, for something like the uh, establish or the uh, invas invasive species related ones, it would be helpful if the translators were in that area because there are some technical terms. Um, but you know, the main th it, these are not controlled by the standards process, so you know we can always continue to improve them. So at, as far as I'm concerned, any translation is better than no translation. And if something's not translated exactly right, we can fix it. There's no requirement to go through public review or anything like that. We can do it very rapidly. Okay. Um, Rob Stevenson says, um, seems the spreadsheet approach might be a good method to maintain common names of species. Has that application been tried? Well, um, the um, metadata for, oh uh, yeah, hmm. I, I mean, in theory, this method could be used with, with anything, but um, uh, it's really about the metadata about the standards and not the data that the standards describe. So you could, you could have a similar process, but, but the, the actual scripts that I have are for managing the terms themselves, not the data described by the terms. Okay. Um, let's see. Peter Desmet says, awesome machinery, Steve. Do you think that uh, those well-documented scripts should be moved to a more operational build procedure that can uh, be triggered automatically with an option to move it to production? Any developers in this chat that are interested in contributing um, a uh, bang or a uh, an exclamation point is equal to commitment and he'll hold you to it. <laughs> yeah, so as I said, I'm not a developer. I'm like a self-taught guy. And so I'm sure somebody who knew what they were doing could make better scripts. But I think sort of the the skeleton of having these CSV files and you know how the transformations from one form to another happen uh, doesn't really matter as long as the end result is the same. So I'm sure some developers could make easier to use tools and things like that. So the last one and Paula, are you queued up? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So uh, we have more, one more question. Also, Maxim, will you check the chat if you haven't already? Um, we've had trouble um, running your, uh, your video. Okay, I will run by myself. Okay, great. Um, so the last question is from, or a uh, comment from Peter Desmet uh, saying, I propose to call the whole continuous in integration pro approach house elves, John Wazorek in the basement. So were, were there anything, was there anything else? Um, Holly is busily adding things to our document. Um, David I'm Bloom just tracking all the Harry Potter parts. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we can probably uh, go ahead and queue up.